Mark, it's nice to see you again. I saw you late in the day uh, last Thursday. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Good. Hey, listen, you know, we, we love your project. Uh, you won one of our Project of the Year awards, and uh, we really appreciate your you participating. Tell us a little bit about your project. Can you just provide us a, a brief description of the project and also the stage at which you're, uh, you're at? Sure. So, so Rail Baltica really is about connections. It's around connecting the three Baltic states, so that's Estonia, um, Latvia, and Lithuania, connecting them to each other, but also connecting them to the rest of the European rail network. So we've got a, um, a cross-border connection into Poland, and then it will be able to run rail services all the way from Estonia to Berlin, Madrid, even the UK. So, so that's what the project's all around. It's a European standard gauge network, electrified double track, and it's for both freight and passenger. So high speed rail for the freight connect for the passenger connection um, and volume for the, the freight to, to allow the, the um, suppliers that are based in the, the Baltics really to um, compete with the rest of Europe and, and support um, getting their products out to market um, better than they can at the moment. At the moment, there's just a road connection. So it's about transferring from road to rail. So it's a it's a serious environmental improvement in terms of the project as well, which is fantastic. Absolutely, the the environmental benefits, the sustainability of this project is, is one of the reasons why the European Union is, is investing in it. It's, it's those benefits that we're delivering um, will be massive for the region. That's phenomenal. When did the project start, and when do you have when do you when is it scheduled to to finish? Um, so the project's been. I guess under discussion for for many many years, as as all these global projects um, are. I mean, you could probably trace it back to the the 1980s for the first time somebody really mentioned it. But but the real um, starting point was 2011 when the the three Baltic prime ministers kind of signed an agreement to get it moving forward. Um, but probably the the real um, impetus was in the last couple of years when we started letting the design contracts and started some of the construction. So right now we're at a point where we're, we're almost complete the design of the alignment. We're starting the, um, the construction of some of the stations, some of the facilities. Um, some of the alignment sections will go out to um, tender later this year, early next year. We've been doing some advanced works in Estonia, some moving of some of the big utilities, some, some highway viaducts over where the alignment's gonna go to, to allow us to prepare. So, so we're right at that point of launching the major construction um, of the civil works, and then obviously into the the track and the systems and so on. It, you know the the um, the artist rendering, I guess the architect's rendering of your station in Tallinn is just spectacular. We really love that uh, that drawing and that the idea. I mean, well, that's what we really love. Yeah, the Tallinn station um, looks really good, um, but so do the ones in, in Riga and um, Vilnius as well. We've got some fantastic developments along the route. Riga station especially, um, it's going to be a combined station with the existing railway and the new one. So it's a it's a big technical challenge. We have to relocate the existing tracks off to the side to build the new station and integrate it back together. We've got the same challenge in um, Vilnius as well, where um, we're going to provide that integrated station environment. So a big construction challenge there too. They're probably two of our, our top challenges in delivering the project is, is those major stations. You probably live for those kinds of challenges too, so that's great. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what makes the project fun. You know, if, you, if you're just building in the middle of the desert, it's not so much fun, but you know, the, these urban challenges, dealing with the stakeholders, solving complex projects, that, that's why we do this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's great. So how did you get here? You, you know, I was looking at your profile, you've had an impressive uh, career working on projects in the UK and around the world. Can you just describe a little bit, because it's interesting, the trajectory of your career. Yeah, so it kind of started off by accident, I guess. I was working for the UK Rail Authority, uh, British Rail as it was at the time, um, and a joint project was launched between them, the French and the Belgian governments to do the high-speed connection between London, Paris and Brussels. Um, and I was seconded into the team to work on that. So I actually went and worked over in Paris and in France as part of that that joint development team for developing um, what's now become Eurostar. Um, and I really liked it. I liked that idea of an international project. It was great. I was then contacted by an American consulting company um, to come and help out on some of the projects in the US. This was kind of late 80s, early 90s, where there was a lot of investment in railways in North America. 
um, but not much expertise because nothing had built, been built there for, for so many years. And it just went on from there, moving from project to project, region to region. I went to Australia, I went out to Asia, to Hong Kong, all over the place. And, and now here I am in the Baltics. It's funny, there's this kind of group of us who do these mega, mega projects. I keep bumping into them all over the place. So um, I've got guys here that I worked with in Malaysia. When I was in the Middle East, I met guys I worked with in Hong Kong. So um, it, yeah, it's just being in the right place at the right time and, and going to the most attractive jobs, I guess. And this is definitely one of the, the best ones, one of the biggest challenges I've been involved in. It looks fantastic. That's my, my next question. I wanted to get a sense of, you know, your biggest, you know, for listening to you, probably your most interesting technical challenges that you've dealt with, that you've overcome, because it's really, you know, to help people to really understand the business you're in, to, to hear how you think about challenges and, and, and overcoming those challenges. Yeah, I mean, to me, with all these projects, the, the big challenge is getting people to really focus on why we're doing it. As I said before, this is all about connectivity. It's connecting cities. It's not about building a railway. The railway is the solution. Um, and it's too easy to get focused up on the technical details and forget why we're building it. And, and suddenly you, you don't provide the capacity or you don't provide the connections to other transit systems that are required to make it a success. So, so on all these projects, really, that, that to me is always the biggest challenge is keeping that focus on why we're building it what benefits we're delivering and all the way checking back to ensure they're being delivered. And I have to say that the team here are really good at focusing on that. We've got a, a great team looking at the strategy about the, the future operation of the railway and making sure that's always fed back into all our designs and everything to, to deliver the maximum capability. But we've got another aspect to it as well. And, and we kind of look at it from the opposite direction to say, okay, so now we're building an infrastructure is there anything else we can deliver as a result of it? So the team are also looking to say, well, can we use it as a, a corridor for rolling out 5G for, for other um, opportunities? We've got this philosophy of dig once. So if there's any other infrastructure planned in the region, let's use this corridor that we're developing to actually provide additional benefit beyond just the railway we're building, provide that opportunity um, so that um, we can maximize the benefit of the construction we're doing. So, so I find it a really interesting project from that perspective that although we're building a railway, we're also building a communications network or enabling one at the same time as well. Now that's that's phenomenal. That's where you know our, we recognize you all in terms of your long-term strategic economic development potential, the benefits you're, you're bringing to the region. And that shows through in, in talking to you and in the profile you all put together and just how you present the project. It's really, it's a, it's a, um, it's refreshing. It's a wonderful project, especially from the US point of view, you know, where we don't, we don't do enough thinking like that, I don't think. Yeah, and I don't think you're unique in that. I've worked on other projects where people get very focused on just building the railway and, and forget why they do it. Right, it's really interesting. Um, and then one of the issues is, and I don't know how you think about this or even if you're at that stage, but how do you think about COVID in terms of a transit facility, a network facility, connectivity? Because it, it just strikes me that, first of all, that's a big challenge for everybody. The, the um, train from Washington to New York, I think, is still operating at 5% capacity. But also there, there are almost certainly technology solutions to helping people feel more safe when they're traveling on uh, rapid transit. So just to get a sense of how you you think about that we're obviously in early stages yeah absolutely um and it again it's something related to these long-term projects that take six eight ten years to build you've got to be very careful that what you build is not obsolete by the time it opens because you designed it so long ago so it's maintaining that that flexibility to understand the latest challenge whether it's health and safety issues like covid whether it's new technologies like 5g whether it, it's new security threat. You need to ensure that you're not so rigid to stick to one design that, that can't adapt. I mean, going forward, for example, by the time we open, I'm sure things like paper tickets just won't exist. Everybody will, will use it on their smartphone. In fact, it'll probably just track you anyway. So, so do we actually need to build ticket gates? Those sorts of things we need to consider in the design right now. And so, so COVID is just one of the, the many things we need to ensure that 
we've got that adaptability in the design so that whatever the situation is when we open we can provide an effective operation very good so what's your next challenge that's what you know it's just the hard <laughs> question <laughs> um so i mentioned we're just about to go into the construction phase this is the biggest project that's ever been built in the Baltics by a long, long way, certainly in terms of infrastructure. And there just isn't the expertise or even the capacity here. But we're competing against a whole bunch of other mega projects um, in Europe and around the world as well. So, so to me, the biggest challenge is actually making our project attractive enough that the big international players actually want to come and get involved in our project. Um, so it's making sure that we've done the, the design to the right standard, to the right quality, that they see it as a, a low risk to actually come and build our project, to make our contracts attractive enough in terms of risk so that um, they don't say, you know what, we don't want to build that one, it's too risky, we'll go and build HS2 in the UK or we'll go and build Firm and Build or, or something else. So, so that to me is the biggest challenge, it's around attracting what we, the capacity we need to build this project. Because um, the Baltic countries companies are great and they want to get involved and they will get involved, but the capacity is just not there. Really interesting. I mean, I, I like that for me, it's it's also refreshing to hear how strategic you think about your project. The, you know, the level of strategic thinking that goes into it is, is pretty important. Yeah. So, I mean, at the moment, for example, mainly the work we've done so far is studies, um, but probably 80% of that has been done by firms outside of the Baltics. So we've had to adopt this strategy of trying to incorporate um, other organizations, other countries in, but actually it gives us a huge benefit because yeah. by getting these companies involved on in our projects, the local firms now are learning how railways are designed in Spain and France and Italy. Um, so for the future now, our local firms here in the Baltics have got that capability now to bid outside the region. And that's, again, one of the objectives we want to try and do is develop the local market so that there's a legacy here of being able to get involved in, in other projects, um, not just in the Baltics, but elsewhere. Um, so there's many elements to the, to the strategy. Again, it's not just about building a railway. It's providing a legacy. It's providing those long-term economic benefits for, for the region, for the, the country, and for the, the organizations that are based here. Well, congratulations again. I mean, that's a phenomenal project. As soon as we can travel, I think that'll be the first place I go. I'll come and bother you and Absolutely. have a beer. You're, you're welcome anytime. All right. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you too.